Hi, a while back we had a look at the Raiden RD6006 power supply and I was really quite impressed with the functionality of this unit. It took a input voltage anyway up to I think 70 volts input and then provided you with a regulated output with all the functionality you'd normally expect from a bench power supply. So this was the 60 volt 6 amp model and Raiden have been talking about making some other versions, higher current, higher voltage versions. And the next one that they've released, which I just received the other day, is the RD6012. Now, it appears to be almost identical. Basically, the difference is that the current capability has been increased all the way up to 12 amps. Now, this unit does require external power supply to do the conversion from mains. So you feed it with a DC supply. Uh, that means you do need something capable of providing these kind of currents from the main supply all the way down to 70 volts so that this can then do the lower voltage conversion. So this unit was provided to me by Banggood and I actually ordered the complete kit. So the power supply, the chassis and then the AC to DC converter. But a word of warning, do not order this at the moment. There is a problem at Banggood's end and they're not shipping the actual power supply in the box, they're only shipping the controller. So, word of warning, don't order this, but it doesn't make financial sense to anyway, because if you total up these three items, it comes out cheaper than this anyway. Um, so, this is the unit that we're actually looking at. Um, this is the wireless version, so this RD6012W, and it comes with a little module which allows you to connect to an app on your phone. It doesn't allow you to connect to your home Wi-Fi and then use the software on the computer. You do have to connect it via the USB interface if you want to connect it to your PC. But you can see here are the specifications all the way up to 720 watts if your AC to DC converter is capable of supplying that. So Banggood are sending me separately the additional items and when they arrive we'll actually do an assembly video and just see how the best way to construct this is into the chassis. Looking at the front of the two units they're absolutely identical other than the model number, which is nice. That means you can mix and match these without them looking out of place. But I thought it might be interesting to have a look at what the differences are that have been implemented on the actual PCBs. So the units have a two board construction. You've got a controller PCB, and then you've got all of the switch mode power supply electronics on a plug-in board. And the top one is the six amp version. The new version, is much bigger on that second PCB. If you peek through, you can see it's exactly the same board on the front panel, but this 12 amp version has quite a few more components and obviously the blue PCB. Now looking at the PCB, it does appear to be basically the same circuit as in the lower power version, just that everything has been beefed up this time. So instead of the two pin connector that we had last time for the input DC, We've got a four pin connector for the extra current carrying capability, so two zero volts and two DC um, inputs. We've got the same DC to DC converter for the low voltage stuff that's on the controller PCB. So we've got a little XL semi book converter here, and that has its own polyfuse just for that. On the input, we've got a common mode choke, which is about three times the size of the previous one. And we've got some fusing here, interestingly, We've got one soldered in fuse and then an empty fuse holder. What that means is if this fuse fails, you can drop in the replacement that came in the box into the fuse holder. Um, but for whatever reason, they've decided, I guess for ease of assembly so that they haven't got an extra production step of inserting the fuse, they've soldered the first one in. We've got a really quite powerful MOSFET sitting here and it's this STP1108 N8F6, which is an 80 volt, 110 amp MOSFET. Um, but given its location in the circuit before the fuse, I think this is here for reverse polarity protection rather than anything else. Now it's not operating as a crowbar, otherwise it would sit after the fuse so that it blows the fuse if the polarity is incorrect. It's basically acting like a diode would, and then once sufficient voltage is developed across the transistor, then the gate is pulled low and it allows it to conduct. We've got the same TL594PWM controller chip, which you can see on the screen here. And this is basically a general purpose PWM controller. And the MOSFETs to this are external. So this has all of the electronics required to do the PWM control, but no power electronics integrated. So that's the rest of the stuff on this PCB. And the power MOSFETs are actually sitting underneath this fan called heatsink. 
Uh, other than that, everything looks pretty similar. We've just sort of got more capacitors on here for smoothing. A bigger inductor, because this is operating as a buck converter, the input supply has to be higher than the output voltage. So we've got basically a standard buck converter. Everything has just been uprated this time for the extra current. Whereas previously we had quite a small relay, we've got this much chunkier 16 amp relay here, which is for switching the output on and off. So this one does allow you to control the output on and off rather than some of the others that we've seen in the past where the output is on all the time. Now this version is the Wi-Fi enabled module, which means it comes with this little module and it plugs into this 8 pin connector here. We also got a battery holder here for the real time clock. But what is quite annoying about this module, you can see that there is this little square here and this actually needs cutting out for it to fit. If you try and fit it in the connector, there's too many parts in the way and it doesn't actually plug in properly into the 8 pin connector. You can see it's fouling just here. So we've got to trim this out with some cutters. So I just took some side cutters to the PCB and it fits in there now, but it's dangerously close to one of these tracers. So it would have been nice to have seen that milled out. Hopefully it still works. Let's try powering it up. So that powers up fine and it appears to have exactly the same user interface as the previous unit. So if you want to have a look at the general functionality, you can click on my review of the ID6006 just up here or in the description down below. Now, one thing that I want to look at is the connectivity. So we'll have a look at the Wi-Fi connectivity and the connection to the app. So we need to go across and change the connection from USB to Wi-Fi. Click enter and then we need to turn the device off and then power it back up again. Now to install the app you go to RD Power on the Play Store and I think they do have this on the iPhone um, App Store whatever it's called on there. So I've just installed it Ruideng Technology so this is from the manufacturers themselves. We can click open And then we need to do the connection configuration. So if we go to network distribution, that's where we put in our Wi-Fi details. So you just configure the Wi-Fi settings through the app. And then once it's all set up, you can connect to the supply itself. Now at the top, it's got a real time graph of what's going on with the output voltage and current. So we've got two tracers, green and cyan for voltage and current. It's also showing you the numerical values here, output power, and then the input voltage. If I change the voltage on the power supply that's feeding it, you can see that's getting updated about once every second or so. To change the voltage, you can click on here, you've got the arrows to move to which digit that you want to change, and you just use the knob just here. Click set, you can turn the power supply on and off here, and you can see that's updated that. So 30 volts, pretty much 30 volts exactly. So the accuracy on this thing does seem to be fairly good. I've tested it at a few different voltages here. Oops. Uh, we'll just change that to something else. 46 volts. And 46 volts. So it does seem to work quite nicely. There's not that much else on this app. I don't know what call out does. Uh, if you click it, you just get this number two. So I don't know what that does. But you've got the temperature got the backlight it's currently on the highest backlight setting but if you wanted to change it to something else you can see that you can update that and then at the bottom there we've just got some of the information if you're doing battery functions it does have this one pin here this isn't a mains earth connection this is a dedicated pin for doing battery testing so you can connect up your lithium batteries or whatever charge it, discharge it, all of that kind of stuff through there. In fact, no, I think it's only charging that you can do, not discharging. Um, but it gives the information here. You've got uh, the ability to read the temperature through the thermocouple that plugs into it. And then it gives you the capacity and the watt hour. Also the model RD6012 serial number and the firmware. But that's all that this app does. The PC app appears to be quite a bit more functional. So when you load up the software, you can see that we've got USB or Wi-Fi connectivity options. However, when you select Wi-Fi, it gives an indication that this is basically still being beta tested and I couldn't get it working on my PC, but it looks like they're getting there. Previously, there was no option to even connect through the Wi-Fi and it was only for the phone app.
However, the USB interface works fine. Once you have the software and plug in the USB port, it installs any software um, drivers as necessary. You can click connect. And then here you can see we've got the real-time information. So it's still got the same voltage and current setting as before. So when you do connect, it doesn't interrupt the supply or anything like that. It allows you to carry on. What's nice on here is that you can use the keyboard to set the voltages. So if you just want to do that, you can press enter and you set the new voltage. You can't change the voltage with the dial. It is by using the keyboard only. Similarly for the current. On the right hand side here, we've got the general settings. So input voltage out, put voltage, current, power, temperature, all that kind of stuff. Constant current, constant voltage. We've got the set points here. So on the front panel, it has the ability to store different presets. You can also do that on the unit here. We've got the details about the battery charging here. So that's the dedicated section. And then one nice function here is, especially if you've got your battery inserted into the unit, you can synchronize the time and date from the PC onto the power supply itself without having to set that manually. On the next tab, we've got some really useful functions. So this is basically similar to the PWL stuff that you'll see on a SPICE simulator. Obviously you won't be able to set these to milliseconds or anything like that, but it means that you can step through various voltage and current settings. It looks like with units of seconds as the minimum. And that means you, if you wanted to do some stepped functions, um, you can do that. You can tell it which steps to start from and end on and the number of times to cycle through that. So that's quite nice. And similarly, we've got what they called voltage scanning and current scanning, but what these are, are ramping up and down. So you can set the start voltage, the end voltage, how much to increase the voltage by for each step, and then the delay between each step. So some quite useful functions there, especially if you're trying to do some testing or some characterization. On the next tab, you've got the ability to connect to multiple power suppliers. So if you've got multiple devices, you can then go through, search for all of the devices that are connected to your unit. They each end up with an address. Once it's finished searching, you then can click connect. It comes up with a list of all the devices that are on here. And then it will show you all of the details of the power supply. And if you had 10 of these connected, you'd see them all listed here and you'd be able to control them all individually, which is quite a nice, useful function. Then we've got the ability to do firmware update and software updates. Now, I'm not quite sure what the difference between these two is. If we do the firmware update, it says we're already on the current firmware version. This looks like this is the firmware for the actual power controller because we've got another option here, software update. And this is the one where it says that they're improving the connectivity, the one that we saw on the app on the phone. So it's not immediately clear, but it looks like software would be the user interface software and the firmware is probably the actual power supply control uh, firmware. Then one final feature, we've got the ability to upload our own picture to use as a splash screen when the unit powers up. So in one of my previous videos, I had a query on this unit as to whether the output is isolated and I can confirm it's not. There's no means of isolation within this device. This is a plain book converter. So there's no means to isolate this from the output. So what it means is the negative input on this terminal block is effectively connected to the negative output on the front panel here. There is a bit of impedance, but not enough to worry about. So what that means is if you wanted to use this for bipolar power supplies, for example, or you wanted to connect a couple in series, that is entirely dependent on the unit that is powering this power supply. If you're running it from batteries, then if you've got a separate set of batteries for each one, that will work fine. If you're using a conventional transformer, and again, it's a separate one for each unit, then again, that would be fine. The problem with a standard transformer is for these kind of power levels, you're gonna need some serious capacitance on there to get rid of the ripple. Otherwise, you're gonna keep seeing dips that are gonna be imposed on the output here. So what you really need to use, almost certainly, is a switch mode power supply. And we have got one of those coming from Banggood, but what is quite often the case is with these big chunky ones, the it has got galvanic isolation between AC and the DC output, but mains earth is often tied to the negative output, which means that we could be in a position where, you know, this negative supply is always referenced to mains earth, which may be undesirable for some people. 
So that power supply and chassis is supposed to be coming this week and then we can do a bit more evaluation on this power supply including looking at the isolation there. Um, it doesn't make sense to do any load testing or noise or looking at the ripple with this powered by my bench power supply because it's a linear power supply with extremely low noise and isn't representative of the recommended configuration for this power supply. So once that arrives, we'll do an assembly video, see what it looks like, the best way to connect up all of the insides, and then we'll have a look actually at the output quality. So I'll put a link to this unit in the description down below. Remember, if you click on the Banggood link, not to consider buying the complete kit at this moment in time because you're gonna get screwed over, you're not gonna receive all of the parts, I am still waiting to see what the resolution is. Although Banggood are sending me the two bits individually, that is not the case for all customers. So we need to find out what the resolution is there. But the single unit is considerably cheaper and you can buy the other parts separate anyway. So no problems there. But also I'll put a link to the seller of the, man uh, the manufacturer of this unit themselves. They've got an AliExpress store and you can buy it directly from them as well. So hopefully you found the video interesting and until next time, thanks for watching.